So good morning, everybody, our friends across the two shores of the Mediterranean. As you know, this is the online edition of the Unimed Week in Brussels. We decided to keep this name because it has become a sort of brand. But of course, uh, we are not, or not all of us are in Brussels. Uh, and this morning, we have a meeting as every year with the uh, uh, European Commission Director General for Research and Innovation. Uh, <clears throat> and of course, we always contact uh, the international, the, the directorate which deals with the international dimension. Uh, so I'm, uh, I'm very glad to have with us uh, Mrs. Cristina Russo, who is the Director for International Cooperation uh, of the same Director General. And later on, we will have Siglinde Gruber uh, head of unit of the Blue Med, uh, the Blue Med Initiative, plus other um, other officials of the uh, DG, and of course uh, we will ask them to talk about uh, the current, uh, uh, let's say, final phase of the uh, <clears throat> Horizon 2020, and of course we are very much interested in know, you know, in uh, what is the uh, upcoming new program, which is called Horizon Europe. Uh, as you all know, in the last uh, phase of Horizon Europe, of Horizon 2020, the current one, there has been a great emphasis on some socio-economic research topics, in particular as, as regards migration. And uh, of course, we are uh, all ears to know what is going to happen uh, in the next, in the next uh, edition of the program. So we have a quite, uh, quite tight, uh, um, agenda and I will give the floor to uh, our director Marcello Scalisi and afterwards to our president Francisco Matabon whom I thank to be here today. Marcello the floor is yours. Yeah thank you Raniero just um, a special thank to um, uh, Cristina Russo for uh, her presence uh, every every year to the Unimed week now we can say that is a, a very not only a good friend of Unimed, but she follows our activity and she follows our engagement with uh, the, the Mediterranean academic community. And we are, as we did the, for the previous program, for the current one, for Horizon 2020, we will do our best to support the European Commission in the preparation of the new program, Horizon Europe. And I hope, as we uh, believe in our uh, region, in our cooperation framework, and we hope that the, the Mediterranean dimension also in Horizon Europe will be in some way, I don't want just to say a priority, but a key issue for the European research community, of course, and of course for the Southern Mediterranean research community. Uh, I come back eventually for some questions after the presentation of Christina, and please, uh, Raniera, go ahead. So uh, I forgot to say that if you want to uh, to take the floor, uh, we don't have uh, uh, hundreds of participants, so we can give the floor, we can uh, uh, let the people talk. Uh, you have a button which is, is raise hands and we will give you the floor after the speech of Christina. Now I give the floor to uh, Professor Francisco Matabon, who is our president. Francisco, the floor is yours. Hello, thank you. Thank you very much for being here. We, this is our fifth edition of the Unimed Week in Brussels. This time it's an online Unimed Week in Brussels. We are virtually there. And uh, ever since the beginning, we have uh, had uh, the honor and the pleasure of having uh, Dr. Maria Cristina Russo with us. We cooperate with the DG in many ways and UNIMED being an association of universities is obviously very interested in what happens in research uh, and in the teaching. Uh, of course, the, these are the two main uh, activities of universities plus our third mission, which is to help societies uh, grow and improve uh, themselves. Never as now, uh, over the past two, three months, 
have we be have we seen how important research is and how important it is to train our peoples and our societies to tackle emergencies or problems of all kinds our cooperation has been on different issues uh, food security blue economy migration just to quote some of them and uh, these are very important issues but unimed is as i said is, a, is an association of universities and we're trying to foster not only because uh, unimed does a lot of work with financed projects uh, that involve different universities from uh, the two shores of the Mediterranean, uh, financed by uh, the European Union. Uh, many of them, most of them, I should say. Uh, and apart from that, we are trying to foster a closer connection between members to organize even in smaller projects uh, cooperation in research, in teaching, in training of staff, in different uh, very important aspects. So uh, for us, the cooperation with you is essential. And uh, one aspect that can, can contribute to what UNIMED does, obviously, is mobility that is an essential part we have uh, had a generation of european uh, people moving around europe and this has proved very very important in raising a european uh, feeling among young people now uh, we need to promote uh, a, an inter-Mediterranean or trans-Mediterranean mobility uh, because this is also important and it is important uh, for the training of people but also for research and we want to foster that aspect to uh, research uh, with, uh, between the two sides of the Mediterranean. This is something we are working on, we have always worked on, and we are trying to develop more uh, now. So thank you very much for being with us. And I am uh, keen to listen to what you have to tell us. Unfortunately, I have to apologize because uh, as a rector, it is very difficult to make all things uh, coincide in the proper way sometimes i have small overlappings so i won't be able to stay uh with you to the end of this meeting but i'll certainly stay in the first part thank you very much indeed again thank you mr president and uh, now uh, our special guest star uh, maria cristina russo who will tell us uh, about what's happening in Christina, the floor is yours. You are muted. You have to unmute your mic. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Raniero. Um, thank you very much, uh, President Mattebon. And thank you very much, uh, Marcello, dear director. Uh, actually, I am in Brussels. So <laughs> I'm very pleased to join this uh, virtual seminar in Brussels from Brussels. I can tell you that it's a very sunny day in Brussels, which is not usual. And I hope that the sunshine will guide the discussion of this, uh, of this important uh, um, UNIMED uh, week. Uh, thank you for all the nice words that you said uh, on, on, on me, on my support, and more, uh, more wider, widely on the support of DG Research and Innovation and the European Commission to the work of UNIMED. Um, it is indeed uh, very important work that you are doing and uh, we can succeed in strengthening our international cooperation in research and innovation 
only if all the stakeholders uh, work uh, to this uh, with this objective and you with your very wide platform of universities have been doing and will be doing even more um, great endeavors for that but um, before uh, concluding again on the highlighting the importance of our cooperation i would like to tell you um, a bit more uh, how things are uh, moving on here in brussels and how we are organizing the work uh, for the next important steps that uh, that we have in, in front of us first of all since the last time that uh, i participated uh, to the unimed week of course major changes took place we have a new president of the european commission um, president uh, ursula von der leyen uh, who has taken a very clear stand for the European Commission to be a geopolitical one. And uh, what is really important about this president is that uh, she clearly uh, said that uh, um, the external relations of the EU must be done together, mobilizing all the internal policies. So what we have been doing for, for, for a long time already to use research and innovation as a key component of the EU's external relations is now really one of the objectives of this president. And uh, I can tell you that uh, we are really working uh, um, a lot since uh, she took office, since December, in this respect. And uh, we, have, uh, we have really made a step uh, um, forward in order to to, to have our important work as a key dimension of what we do with the countries outside Europe. Also, um, when we speak about uh, the countries from the Southern Mediterranean, we have uh, um, an important challenge ahead, which is uh, the fact that the, all the priorities uh, of uh, the association agendas uh, with the partners in the Southern neighborhood will have to be uh, rediscussed, revamped, and I do hope that uh, research and innovation uh, will uh, um, take or maintain the important role that it has into, in our partnership with the countries from the southern um, of the Mediterranean. Now, um, if uh, uh, we turn to uh, our research and innovation policy, uh, we have uh, we are uh, at the point of launching the new research and innovation program horizon europe which will be even bigger than than horizon 2020 horizon 2020 which is the program which is phasing out now um, as i always said so you might have heard me already saying that is the biggest multilateral research program in the world and it was fully open to, to the world, fully open to participation of countries, researchers from outside Europe. Horizon Europe, the name of the new program, which will be launched at the end of this year, starting from 2021 until 2027, will be even bigger than Horizon uh, Europe. We have a budget of 94 billion of euros now, which has been uh, increased with the with the with the revised proposal that the commission has adopted on the 27th of may on the multi-annual financial framework together with the recovery plan for europe and with this revised proposal we have had a further increase of the budget of horizon europe and also what is really very relevant to say in this forum is that uh, in, in the recovery package, the Horizon Europe has been put together with what we call the INDICI program, which is the EU's program for international relations, which covers the developing countries, covers the former uh, neighborhood program, so the, all the countries of uh, the Southern Mediterranean. And uh, the fact that uh, the program for research and the program for international cooperation have been uh, um, considered in the same uh, pillar in, um, in the Recovery Fund for Europe says a lot about the link uh, between uh, um, research and innovation and uh, the external policy of the, of the, European, uh, of the European Union. Um, this, uh, um, we, we are preparing the launching of Horizon Europe, 
uh, which uh, should have the same opening to the world uh, as Horizon 2020. But uh, what we are doing is that we are revamping our strategy for international cooperation uh, with the aim uh, to have uh, our international cooperation more effectively tackling the priorities of, um, of, this, uh, of this commission. We would like uh, to focus our international cooperation on the, um, on the implementation of the Green Deal, which, as you know, is one of the big uh, flagship of this commission, um, a, a green Europe, a green Europe in the in a green world. So we want to really enhance our cooperation with the international partners on all what is climate change, renewable energies, which are sectors of the utmost importance already in our cooperation with the Southern Mediterranean. We want to enhance our cooperation on digital, on the digital agenda, which is also one of the subjects that uh, you will be discussing uh, in this week. And also what we would like to, um, to, to strengthen, also taking the lessons from the COVID-19 crisis, is our cooperation in the field of global health. There, I would like to say that uh, we currently have a very important program, which is the European and Developing uh, Countries Clinical Trials Partnership, the EDCTP, which uh, was launched already almost 20 years ago. And it is a partnership with Sub-Saharan Africa on uh, um, clinical trials related to infectious diseases. And uh, we are currently discussing the, um, the, the, the continuation of this partnership and uh, the turning of this partnership into a global health program, which will, be, uh, which will broaden its objectives also in order to tackle different diseases and uh, which should also uh, uh, see a, a stronger role from the uh, northern African countries, from the southern Mediterranean countries. So there are really new opportunities also in the field of, uh, of health. And then um, the, the, fourth, the fourth pillar of this revamped strategy for international cooperation, let me recall the three first ones, the Green Deal, the digital agenda, the global health, and the fourth one would be a strengthened cooperation on innovation. On innovation, innovation is very important, and uh, in innovation there have, there have been already major initiatives launched with our southern Mediterranean partners, and we want to build on them, to develop them, to make our innovation cooperation even more flourishing. So these are the pillars uh, for the, the this, uh, international cooperation strategy will lay the foundation for the Horizon Europe. And uh, in order to have uh, these, um, these uh, policy objectives operational and to translate them also in activities that uh, we want to carry out with the partners from the Southern Mediterranean uh, countries. We are uh, having uh, a detailed discussion within the UFM, within the UFM platform for research and innovation. Uh, we had a meeting uh, some weeks ago, a virtual meeting. Um, I, in, the, in the meeting that we, we had in preparation of this virtual meeting, which was still in Barcelona, I think uh, that Ranieri, you participated uh, either yourself or somebody else from UNIMED. But I think it was you, and we were very pleased uh, to have you because uh, it's uh, really a sign of our uh, important cooperation. And uh, in, now, uh, within this, uh, within this uh, format, this regional platform in research and innovation of the UFM, we have discussed those priorities that I have mentioned, discussed with our partners from the Southern Mediterranean, and uh, we are there developing the uh, strategic orientations which uh, will be uh, translated into concrete actions in Horizon uh, Europe when it will be, it will be launched. Uh, of course, um, the, the, these, uh, these initiatives uh, go together with, uh, uh, with some very promising initiatives that exist and we want to strengthen. And I'm very happy that uh, after me, my good uh, colleague and good friend, uh, Sigi Gruber, will be speaking. She will speak about the Blue Med cooperation, which is one of the, really, of the pillars of our uh, cooperation with the Southern Mediterranean. 
uh, together, of course, with the Prima program that we have launched and which were the object of the La Valletta Ministerial Declaration that we adopted in 2017 in this uh, EU Southern Mediterranean Ministerial Meetings of Research and Innovation. So that is, um, that is also those activities are, are very important and will be continued and also strengthened. Now, to conclude, uh, what is there for UNIMED, which is the role of UNIMED, why for us the cooperation with UNIMED is very important. I think that I already said it, uh, and I really appreciated uh, uh, the cooperation that we had with, uh, with UNIMED uh, during uh, these, these years. I'm convinced that the work that you have done in order to put together the, um, the universities from, uh, from Europe and from the Southern Mediterranean countries to discuss, uh, to present the opportunities uh, existing in the, in the Horizon uh, 2020 program, but also to discuss uh, the, the policy objectives, uh, I think it has been very fruitful because if we also see the participation of uh, Southern Mediterranean uh, uh, researchers uh, in uh, Horizon 2020, uh, the more uh, come from, from the university. Uh, for the moment, uh, we have uh, um, under Horizon 2020 around 274 entities from the South Med partner countries, which are involved in, um, in, um, in projects. Uh, the president spoke about the mobility. We have 700, 781 researchers from southern neighbor, neighborhood countries with, uh, who have participated in uh, Maris Rodoska Curie actions, which are our mobility uh, activities. So I think that the work that you've been doing has uh, brought some important results because I'm confident that uh, it contributed uh, to these um, successful numbers that I, I, am, uh, I am enumerating here. And uh, for me, um, now uh, it's important that uh, this, uh, this work of UNIMED as a platform for raising awareness about collaboration opportunities under the EU program, and also as, um, also as a possible organizer of matchmaking events in the region, and in providing support for the participation of SADMED uh, partners in those programs uh, should really be enhanced. And uh, what I would like to say in conclusion is that, uh, as, you, as you know, and as you said, we really support your work and you can continue to count on our support because I would not like to close my um, intervention before say, without saying that uh, the, the current Commissioner for Research and Innovation, Mrs. Maria Gabriel, she in, attaches a lot of importance to international cooperation and uh, in, within this framework, uh, great importance to cooperation with the Southern Mediterranean countries. So with those words, uh, I really hope that you will have a very fruitful discussion and I'm sure that our very good cooperation will be even uh, uh, better under the new Horizon uh, Europe program and I wish you a very good day of discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Christina, for this uh, short but uh, meaningful uh, presentation of the future plans and of course we are very much uh, uh, anxious to uh, to know more and to see how this all this will be turned translated into uh, concrete uh, actions and calls for proposals. I always say that uh, uh, the framework program has always been a best performer also in terms of keeping the timing. I also I always remember that uh, the current uh, program Horizon 2020 was supposed to start on the 1st of January 2014. But if I remember well, the first call for proposal was issued 15 days before, in December 2013, uh, which is, uh, I think, an excellent, an excellent achievement. Uh, so now uh, the floor is open for uh, questions, uh, considerations, uh, recommendations. I don't know if uh, Marcello or Professor Matebon wants to say, so say something. We have some questions from the floor. But if Michael, I, I have some questions, if I may, to Christina. Um, one, oh, we are among friends. Uh, we have few 
uh, a small group of people from all the region. I saw in the list people from several of our southern Mediterranean countries and not only there are a lot of so European. But I have some question. First of all, as you mentioned Ranier, about the timetable, time uh, because we saw that uh, in the previous presentation of the future Erasmus uh, Plus program that probably relating to the international cooperation, we will miss one year. And the program will start uh, officially the 1st of January of 2021, but most probably the real uh, start will be in 2022. I would like to know if there is any picture about the timetable of the new program, considering that, that the budget is not, the European budget, I mean, is not yet approved. And uh, another question is about uh, the, another thing that Christina mentioned about the associations, uh, the country associated to the horizon. Do you suggest to our members to push their government to be associated to, I mean, for the Southern Mediterranean countries, of course, to be associated. We, are, we already have Tunisia in associated in the Horizon program, but do you suggest this process or is something that is at the end not so uh, useful because in any case, universities can participate independently by that? And the last is um, a sort of, uh, question uh, concerning coordination. Uh, with this new commission, you have uh, one commissioner for research and education, which is for us quite interesting. Uh, looking at the previous experiences uh, about the lack time by time of coordination about these two, area, two areas. Do you think that this will be something uh, useful, in particular, I mean, for the international cooperation to invite uh, the commission in itself to see at the both dimension of uh, university research and education as a, a tool for improve better and better, or do you think that at the end that things remain as they are? I think this is a question among friends, at least. Thanks. I see, Marcello, that we really are friends now because it's, uh, these questions that you asked are very direct, which is a very good sign of a great cooperation that we, we have. Are, we are just <laughs> recording the webinar, don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Normally you don't record a conversation between friends, but uh, okay. So, um, on the timetable, on the timetable, uh, I mean, uh, first of all, the good news is the one that I told, uh, is that uh, on the, the, the MFF, the, the revised proposal of the MFF increased the budget on Horizon Europe. So this is, uh, this is very important. Uh, and of course, uh, the timetable of the discussions uh, we have to we, it is linked to the timetable of the approval of the MFF. Uh, you know that uh, not later than Friday there was the European Council uh, that had the first discussion on the on the multiannual financial framework MFF spend for multiannual financial framework, and we hope that an agreement on the budget will take place at the leader summit uh, in uh, in July. And then uh, the, 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 the program should be launched. We are quite advanced on Horizon Europe because uh, we reached uh, already last year a partial general approach on the main provisions of the, of the program. Uh, we still need to discuss the international cooperation once, in particular in relation to association, but uh, I'm quite optimistic that uh, if the MFF are agreed, we can launch the program in time so we will not be losing one year. Of course, uh, that depends uh, from this uh, decision to be taken uh, at, um, at, a, at a higher level on the whole spectrum of the MFF. On association, in fact, I didn't mention association when I gave my, my when I spoke, uh, but I'm very happy to speak about that. Association, it's, it's a very important form of international cooperation. From the southern Mediterranean countries, so we have uh, Israel, uh, which has been associated for a long time, and then uh, Tunisia, which associated itself in the, during the Horizon 2020 program. 
uh, it, the case of Tunisia that you mentioned in, indeed worked very well because Tunisia also made a major reform of its research system. And uh, I, I'm, I'm sure that Raniero remembers uh, our Tunisian friend, uh, this lady, I don't, I don't recall her name, that uh, participated uh, at the UFM meeting in November when she, she, spoke, all the, she spoke about all the, the reforms that uh, were carried uh, out in Tunisia in order to fully tap the potential of association. So indeed, uh, um, association is, is, is a very important uh, possibility which is offered to the countries of the Southern Mediterranean. It, it, it will be, it, but it brings the benefits, not per se, not because you are associated. It brings benefits only if with association you really uh, put in place this uh, major uh, also uh, reform that uh, could uh, allow you to, to tap the opportunities. And I have to say something only just for the record, since we are among friends, even if we are registered, is that um, <laughs> in, my, in my experience as director of international cooperation, I think one of the most difficult uh, uh, parts of my job has been to negotiate the five international agreements to associate uh, uh, five countries from the Southern Mediterranean to Prima. I have negotiated uh, the agreements with Algeria, with Egypt, with Jordan, uh, with, uh, um, with uh, Morocco, and with Lebanon. And uh, just to say that, uh, uh, for example, uh, with Lebanon, there was uh, the first agreement we did after 11 years that there was not a fully fledging agreement uh, between the EU and, uh, and, uh, and Lebanon. So just to recall that uh, the association uh, needs the negotiation of international agreement, which is something that could be done, but it does not come uh, like that. Huh? It has to go through the, the parliaments, uh, where the governments, I mean, the, the Council of Ministers, etc. So it's a, it's a process which is certainly can be certainly beneficial. It's a, what we call the highest form of international cooperation. But it it works if with association you you really are ready to to restructure your reserve system and also you have to take into account that in order for association to come you have to negotiate, conclude, sign and ratify an international agreement. On the third point on inviting the commissioner, I'm sure it's a great idea because uh, Mrs. Gabriel, uh, not only she's a, she's a very nice person, uh, but she's also very, very committed uh, to a cooperation with the southern Mediterranean countries and also she's a really a strong believer of the importance of dealing together, tackling together the research and education elements. And you ask me a difficult question, do you think that something will change? I do think and hope that it will change and I think that the commissioner, she's putting all her energy and do believe me she has a lot of energy in order to change things for have a more holistic approach uh, which comprises both the education and the research side of, uh, of her portfolio. Raniero, you are mute. Sorry, I'm not used to these new technologies. So I'm, I'm, I'm an old man. <laughs> Christina, there is a question from the floor. They would like to know that whether there will be uh, in other important conferences in the near future of Euro-Mediterranean ministers of higher education uh, to discuss, uh, let's say, these kind of themes of European cooperation. So you see, you, you are technologically advanced because you can also grasp the questions <laughs> from the <laughs> chat. <laughs> so, yes, no, I, I have seen the question. Um, we, we, for the moment, we do not foresee a specific ministerial um, at, with the Euromed ministers. What we are foreseeing, and I didn't speak during my intervention because I, I wanted to to, to stick to the to the to the main points, uh, but uh, what we have ongoing is also an important cooperation with Africa as a whole, what we call the high-level policy dialogue with Africa, and what we are organizing now for the 16th of July. It is a ministerial conference 
between the uh, between the European Union and the African Union, and uh, it is a framework in which many of the southern Mediterranean countries will uh, participate. So this time I, I'm unmuted the mic. Uh, so Christina, this meeting uh, mid July will be a, a, a physical meeting or an online meeting. <laughs> No, it will be an online meeting. It's going to be very challenging because we will have uh, all the, the, the European Union and the African Union. And uh, I can tell you that uh, we had uh, the preparatory meeting, the high level policy dialogue plenary last Thursday. And it, it was quite challenging, but it worked. So I hope that uh, this will work as well. And uh, we are currently, um, we will have this meeting also in light uh, of the reaction post-COVID, both from uh, a health research point of view. And I mentioned before the EDCTP, the launching of this new Global Health Alliance, in which uh, also we do hope that the uh, countries from the Southern Mediterranean or North Africa, put uh, in the, in the angle you prefer, will have uh, a greater role. And also what we would like to, to, to tackle at ministerial level are the socio-economical consequences of the crisis and, um, and they're also paving the way for an, um, let's say, enhanced uh, position of the international cooperation in uh, Horizon uh, Europe. And uh, we, will, uh, we, we thought also about having, this, um, uh, having uh, an Euromed um, ministerial conference, especially because, as I mentioned, we are launching this, uh, revamping this dialogue with the UFM. Uh, and so we have not excluded that, but we have not decided to have it now, but certainly at a later stage, we will have it uh, uh, again, since uh, now La Valletta Ministerial was 2017. So, I mean, it could be time, uh, but uh, not for this year. Okay, thank you. Uh, if there are no other questions from the floor, I have a, one, one very, very fast uh, and last question, and it is about the Prima Initiative, of which the European Commission is one of the uh, strongest partners. Uh, what will happen in, in the frame of uh, Horizon Europe? What will be the future of Prima uh, in the near future? Thank you. I mean, uh, we are not uh, the strongest partner. We are the one that uh, <laughs> put, put, uh, all, put, put all the budget for the part one of the Prima and also that, uh, so it's, uh, it's, uh, it's an initiative which was, uh, which was uh, in which the Commission, of course, had a very important role. Uh, Prima has a 10 years duration. So, I mean, it goes beyond the, the, horizon, uh, the horizon Europe, the Horizon 2020. It will not be phased out because if you remember correctly, the duration is, uh, is 10 years. So it will have uh, still time uh, to, to live uh, during the, the period of Horizon uh, Europe. That's why in the discussion of the partnerships, within Horizon Europe, we are not discussing Prima because it goes without saying that it continues due to the 10 years duration. Okay, thank you, that's good news. I, I think have, you have to leave, but Marcello has a very fast question. It's a question and a comment at the same time. Um, the last, the, the, the point is again about the ministerial meeting on uh, higher educational research. The last ministerial meeting on education was in 2007 in Cairo. And there is no one, no another ministerial meeting dedicated to education. And in 15 years, uh, the world has changed totally, in particular in our region. And I think that is a really time to discuss about. Um, the la as you mentioned, I was uh, in the, the, the ministerial meeting of research was 2010, uh, 17, sorry, I was there. Uh, was a very nice meeting, but I saw also in particular that there was a lack of um, participation directly from the ministers in itself. Uh, there was the commissioner, the minister from Portugal, I remember probably someone from the south, or probably just one, and then many vice minister or so. And I think that is a, another, or in some case, the participation was from uh, diplomatic. I think that this is a 
one point that we have to underline altogether. And uh, I offer in this the, 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 the work of UNIMED to push our ministers from our region to give more importance to the international cooperation or, or research, because it's the only way, research in particular, education is for sure is mandatory, but it's probably less relevant than research. Research is not possible to, to work on it only looking at the national framework. We are obliged in some way or another looking at our common priorities to cooperate. It is important to underline this to our uh, Southern Mediterranean government, but also able to say to the European government, to every member states, the relevance of all this. I know that is obviously, you, <laughs> you are totally agree on this, but how to improve this participation of ministers directly to be committed to support more and more research. And I think that the platform with UFM could play in this an important role and we will support you on this, you and the UFM, of course, to succeed on this, on this uh, commitment and stop here. Thank you very much, Marcello. Just a comment before I leave. Uh, as you said, I have to leave, but I'm very happy that Sigi Gruber will come afterwards. Uh, uh, she will keep uh, the flag very high <laughs> uh, for the European Commission. Um, no, indeed, uh, it's, uh, it's, it, it, uh, it was uh, in La Valletta, we, we, had, we did a lot of work and in terms of participation uh, was, uh, was, was said. I mean, I really use the, the word said. Huh? Uh, so uh, I, I think that uh, uh, since then a uh, lot of work has been uh, has been made. I also am very happy about the support that we have from the UFM, the current Secretary General, uh, um, my dear friend um, uh, Nasser, um, is uh, is very committed uh, to research and innovation. As also, he was the previous one, eh? Fatal also, he was very committed, but uh, uh, so he, he, he left the situation with high commitment and the new Secretary General took it uh, uh, also on board. And I, I'm confident that this work that we are doing in the UFM will also help uh, to raise the participation. And of course, uh, UNIMED uh, can, uh, can be also a catalyst uh, for, uh, for, for that to, 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 to make the, the interlocutors from the Southern Mediterranean and also also from the EU, eh, because uh, we also have to look at the EU. We we don't <laughs> we have to look at ourselves before the others uh, to to really be sure of the importance of the international cooperation. Just uh, because I have to leave, just the one thing I want to say is that uh, as uh, always in life, uh, anything has the bad and good parts. Of course, the COVID-19 has been a disaster, a dramatic situation uh, for, for, uh, for the society, for all of us. But if there is something which, uh, which has managed to do, is that it really raised the importance of international cooperation in research and innovation. I also uh, had uh, long speaking points on COVID, which I skipped uh, not to be too long in my presentation. But uh, you have seen how much the European Commission has been engaged uh, with uh, the, um, the communication on the global response to COVID, which was adopted by the European Commission and the External Action Service on the 7th of April. And there, one of the big part of the external action, of the external uh, response to COVID is research innovation. You've seen the pledging initiative that uh, Commission President van der Leyen launched on the 4th of May to raise funds for vaccine diagnostics and treatments. And you, you see, so the, this crisis really showed the importance of cooperating on research innovation. So I think that uh, we are uh, in a situation whereby um, the, the, the next, the, the, there are elements that uh, could make that at the next uh, ministerial there would be higher level participation. And we do hope that uh, also in the, the question that you put forward for the AeroMed, it's the question that we are tackling now for the uh, ministerial with the African Union. It's gonna be it's gonna be a test. Let's hope that it will do well. It will go well. And uh, with those words, I, I I I want to thank you so much again. I mean, it's always really very. Um, it's a pleasure to work with you, and uh, I really hope that the day will be as good as it is announced. 
and um, hope to see you soon next time, not virtually, but uh, maybe physically. So have a nice day. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you, Christina. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So this is the, the end of the first bye. session. This time I'm not muted, so you can hear me. Uh, <coughs> uh, so, <coughs> sorry. Now we can take a short break to give you the, the opportunity to smoke a virtual cigarette or even a real one. And in uh, five minutes, uh, we will start uh, the next session, which is about uh, the uh, Blue Med Initiative with the uh, <coughs> Mrs. Sigi Gruber, who is the head of unit for Marine. Uh, technologies uh, at the same DG as as, uh, as Christina Roos. See you in five minutes. Yes, I'll have to leave you because I have another meeting starting in five minutes. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Ciao, Francisco. Okay. Ciao. Thank, Thank you very you. much, President, for being Thanks. with us. Thank, Thank you. you. I take the occasion of Marinero during the, the people smoke cigarette or, or maybe coffee. If they have eventually, if our partners, our members, they have some question to address to us, not only to the commission, this is a good occasion to spend and to invest some time to discuss about uh, if they are looking for something in particular, mm -hmm. looking at UNIMED and uh, the work on research, but not only in the meantime that we wait that Sigi Gruber is coming. To talk about yes, of course, we are, we are here and available to answer your, hopefully we'll be able to answer your questions if they are not difficult. <laughs> you can, uh, eventually, we are expert enough to skip the questions, <laughs> if needed. You can, you can uh, raise your hand and I can give you the floor so you can speak or, or you can write your questions in the, in the chat. There are no questions, so I th everything was very, very clear. And <laughs> Sigi, ah, okay, there is. Eccola, Sigi. There is from Anya, there is a question from Anya Zorop. There, is, there, there are plans for establishing another Euromed University. Uh, uh -huh. Okay, uh, the Euromed Universities, there are at the moment two Euromed Universities created with this uh, umbrella name, which are the one uh, founded in uh, Slovenia, which is the EMUNI. And uh, there is another one now uh, created in Morocco, which is in FES. Both of them, they have the, um, some way the support uh, about European Commission in uh, at least in the launch of all this. Uh, and but they remain in universities in some way they deliver courses of a few number of students uh, and uh, I think that is an important initiative at both important initiative but we believe that the networking dimension guaranteed by UNIMED is totally different because we help our members to deliver courses in common with other members or to deliver research initiative or capacity building initiative and uh, uh, looking at the Euro-Mediterranean Euro cooperation. At the moment there are these two ones I, I, in Morocco and Slovenia. I don't think that the, the, there are any plan to establish new uh, Euro-Mediterranean universities. I think that if, uh, and of course, okay, so now more we, about uh, the you know, VA mail, and then we will have a chat on this uh, uh, in more in detail. If Sigi is available. Sigi, welcome to our meeting. Can you hear us, Sigi? Yes, hello, I can. Uh, very nice to see you again. Long time oh, that I haven't seen you. Can you hear uh, me and see me? 
can hear you and see you very well. Thank you for being with us. <coughs> we had a, a very informative session with uh, Christina about the uh, uh, future of the framework program, the Horizon Europe. And uh, we are very keen to, to listen, to hear from you what, uh, what are the news about the Blue Mad Initiative or more in general about marine research. So uh, I will, uh, <clears throat> uh, so I don't think I have to introduce Sigi, she is the, the head of unit of marine resources at uh, Director General for Research. Uh, and uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, this kind of initiative is very important for, for the Mediterranean because uh, most countries which are around the Mediterranean uh, Sea are, are involved. Uh, as, you, as you all know, probably, uh, Horizon 2020 and hopefully also Horizon Europe are uh, European programs which are very much open to cooperation with uh, uh, non-European countries, provided there is what they call the mutual benefit. Mm -hmm. uh, but in this case, I, th I think it is self-explaining that all the countries which are uh, bordering the Mediterranean Sea are, are, are <coughs> able to contribute to the program. So, Marcello, do you want to say something before Sigi starts? You're muted. You're muted. No, I, <laughs> You're I know. Muted. No, also in this case, I have to just Obviously, two thanks. First of all, uh, Sigi. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. <coughs> thanks, Sigi, for uh, participation. But again, uh, it's not the first time that Sigi attended the, the Unimed Week, and also she pushed us to be active in this uh, Blue Med dimension that uh, uh, this program has an, has an important objective, which is to that started from the European dimension, but move it to the Mediterranean, uh, to Mediterranean cooperation. And I think that probably this was not clearly understood by uh, our members and uh, I, I'm grateful to Sigi again to push us on this and to think that UNIMED can uh, support the European Commission on, on this. And I really appreciate this. And of, of course, we will at your disposal to improve the Mediterranean dimension of Blumet if still needed. Thank you very much. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's always a pleasure. So uh, thanks for inviting me. Now, I wanted to maybe to start uh, with a couple of questions, if that is okay <laughs> to you <laughs> and for you, uh, because uh, I, I will inform you about the Blue Med initiative, of course, but I just wanted to ask you, are you or have you taken part in with our pilot, the Plastic Free Mediterranean? Because I don't think I have seen uh, your name. And so this is something where I would like maybe to focus my, uh, my very short talk today and uh, really invite you to involve, to get involved, because we need to, as well the local actors to be involved. So it is, it's not so much about um, now funding, but it is much more about uh, engaging with stakeholders and engaging as well through you then with the citizens at local level. Are you familiar with our pilot for a plastic free Mediterranean? I saw the launch it, but probably we didn't participate in the, in the activity. Good. So then oh, can I good. push you? <laughs> can I then push you for that? <laughs> So, but first of all, um, let me then, I mean, everyone I think knows uh, Blue, the Blue Maid initiative, I hope. Huh? And what has happened in the last uh, year or so since I think we the last time connected is that uh, uh, a lot of, uh, of seminars uh, in the different countries have taken place. The consultation about uh, research uh, um, priorities of the different countries participating. 
has also been taken place and the strategic research and innovation agenda has been updated. So this uh, update is, uh, will be now available, I think, as of next week, because this week we have uh, a meeting of the, of the working group of the senior officials. And Marcello, uh, I would like to invite you to be an observer in that meeting. It is on the 25th this week uh, from 10 to 1. So I will reach out to Margarita so that you, so you, you, you get a taste actually of where we are. And, and why is this important? It's important that you have a, a framework within which you see that the whole initiative is continuing. And um, about um, a year ago, a little bit less, a little bit more, <coughs> uh, after the European Commission adopted the new strategy for the bioeconomy, a bioeconomy for Europe, we included in one of the actions that uh, we should really look into place-based initiatives. Where could we make a difference through recycling, reusing, preventing that plastic enters the sea. And we identified the Mediterranean, which is the most polluted sea in the world, which you might not know, but it is, unfortunately, you know, per volume water. It is, it's not the Pacific, it is the Mediterranean. We launched together with our partners uh, on a voluntary basis. We said, okay, what can we do if we want to achieve by 25 a plastic-free Mediterranean, what needs to be done in terms of, uh, first of all, we need to, to have a mapping, what initiatives do exist? How can people learn from each other? How can, how can we share all this information? Because there are very interesting initiatives going on in Spain, France, Italy, in Morocco, in Tunisia, in Egypt, in Turkey, in Malta, people don't know. So we, we have really established this whole process of learning from each other to share good practices at local level. Then we have reached out uh, to the different NGOs. We have reached out to the industry. So Plastic Europe has also been involved. Um, the Blue Med colleagues developed even an online now course, which is something very interesting for, I think, universities, modules on how really to tackle the whole issue of, uh, of plastic. And it is from a research point of view, because we don't have yet a, base, a baseline about uh, microplastics entering the sea. We don't know how much is entering. Where is the microplastic going? How many fishes are affected? We know certainly that the mussels are all affected. If you eat mussels or vongole or any oysters, etc., because they function as a kind of uh, a washing machine because they they recycle the water so they absorb all the microplastic all that goes into this into our body when we eat it but what is the effect actually on the human health so we wanted really to have we have put out several projects which we are funding co-funding also the member states uh, are funding it in as part of the joint programming initiative healthy oceans uh, the private sector so what we have done, we have created in the different countries so-called hubs where the most interesting initiatives have now been collected, they are shared, they are now going to be stored in a virtual platform which will be shown this week in the meeting and where we invite, constantly invite other actors to nurture this whole wealth of existing initiatives. We know, for example, as well, that there are interesting initiatives with collecting plastics, with collecting samples, with collecting fish, fishing gears. They are transformed into... Wait, I think I lost you. Are you still there? Can you hear me? Yes, we can see you and hear you. 
Okay, so um, we reached out uh, to a whole group of small and medium enterprises uh, and to see how they are recycling and reusing the whole plastic. So this, this is, is just a snapshot, it's a whole wealth of different ongoing things, initiatives, which we hope might also be of interest for you and you participate. And why am I mentioning this and why are we placing actually a lot of um, importance of this? First of all, this has been launched as a pilot. We wanted to test what does it mean to have such a pilot? What does it entail in terms of research which is needed, funding which is needed, engagement which is needed, uh, a lot of regulatory aspects are needed because uh, it's regulated differently in the different countries, even though the EU has uh, the whole uh, circular bioeconomy strategy and the, the, the waste strategy in place and the framework directive for marine in place, etc. But how is this implemented at national or regional level? So what are the different measures which are needed? Do we need as well to contact the university to help us train more students to get uh, this whole notion of uh, importance to prevent the plastic entering the seas into the curricula? What could be done at that level? So, all these different uh, aspects we are trying to analyze because in Horizon Europe we also have one of the big novelties are the future missions and there is a future mission on healthy ocean seas coastal and inland waters and the pilot will be part of the mission so that is why this pilot is for us really something we are very keen to further develop and we would welcome to have a development together with you. So that's the first point. The second point is uh, when it comes uh, to sampling and to store, uh, to collect the data and to store them for actually scientific purposes. This is also something I imagine that universities might be very interested in. So we will launch as well uh, different activities for sampling purposes, particularly focusing on plastic, not only in the sea, but at that moment also the rivers are important. Now, not in all countries in the Mediterranean, there are big rivers because of the lack of water but in those countries which do have rivers we would also like to invite you then in a second once we launch this it's called, going to be launched uh, later this year to actively engage with us in the sampling processes and the last thing is uh, i'm just uh, trying to yes what uh, what actually uh, is done at the level of uh, universities and civil society and NGOs really for the whole prevention. Are there any programs, this is particularly speaking to the social scientists, who can uh, help us uh, and tell us uh, how can we co connect people better with the values of our Mediterranean Sea, the importance that the Mediterranean Sea has for the well-being, for wealth creation, for tourism, particularly now after COVID, the whole COVID crisis, which hits us all and will hit us in the next uh, months or years to come. What can be done in terms of uh, making people aware different types of approaching the issue so it would be interesting for us as well to engage with you and the universities to see are there ongoing initiatives at the level of the universities that you can share with us. And my last issue is because 
of the importance of all this being part of the future mission, and that's the good part, there will also be a lot of money attached to it in future. <laughs> because the mission is one of the five big missions which we are working on now. We have uh, uh, a group of high-level people. Our mission board is chaired by ex-commissioner Pascal Lamy, who some of you might know. He was also the head, uh, the director general of the World Trade Organization. He has a genuine active interest in the sea, particularly the Mediterranean Sea. And we are um, expecting the final report, which is an advice to the Commission from the Mission Board mid-September, but this week the interim report will already be published. So stay tuned and you will see that uh, the Mediterranean is actually included as one of the proposals. So with that, uh, I, I think it is better that uh, I am available for many questions which you might have. We will also, the last thing is uh, no, an, an additional information. The, we have now been working with the different countries, not only in the Mediterranean, but also in the Black Sea, in the Baltic Sea, to work out, is it possible in future to combine the different sea basin strategic research and innovation agendas and to have one overarching big umbrella, what we call European partnership. So that's what we are also working on. There will be, the, the, the Blue Med will also converge into the future European partnership for a blue economy by 2030. And that will be launched according to the plans. It's proposed now to be launched in 2023. So BlueMed will not stop, but it will be part as well of a bigger pan-European all sea basin connecting program for the future. And when I talk about program, it means that one third will be funded by the European Commission and the two thirds come from the different countries participating. So it is a, it's a big co-fund program, as we call it. And that means like a mini framework program with calls to be published every year where different uh, participating institutions can apply. Over to you. Uh, thank you very much, Sigi, for this uh, for this presentation. Uh, uh, the, the last point you mentioned this this uh, uh, cooperation program is it under Article One Eighty Five, like like the Prima, or what, what no. kind of no. is that? It is. It's not. We have uh, two types of uh, what we call European partnerships in the future horizon Europe. One is the so-called institutional ones which are based on an article 185 or 187, and the others are either co-fund or co-programmed. Okay. I'm talking about a co-fund, which is, has a much more flexible structure than an article 185, doesn't need to go through the whole process of uh, co-decision, uh, impact assessment, etc. We are now working with all the countries uh, and we will, if everything goes okay, we will publish their proposal in about 10 days on our website for European partnerships. And do you, do you already have an idea of, or, or, I mean, I'm sure you have, uh, of the participating countries, the, the non-EU countries which will be participating? Can, can you tell us the names or not yet? No, that we don't have yet because they have to be associated to the framework program oh, if, as, 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 as uh, members to constitute the European partnership. Huh? Mm -hmm. So it, will, it could be Tunisia, as Tunisia is already, Turkey, uh, and they are, um, Turkey is, is actually quite involved now as well in our, in our constant uh, uh, exchanges, but they can participate 
once the calls are published. Okay. So, so one are the, the, the founding members, yeah, which are part, and then the others, when the call is published, people can still pay in. It's like a, an Aeronet core fund, but much, much bigger. Okay, that's very clear, thank you. So are there any questions for, uh, for Sigi otherwise, from uh, questions from the floor? Uh, I have one, um, one thing to say, it's not actually a, a question, it's a piece of information which I'm, I'm sure you are aware of, but I would like to, uh, <coughs> to repeat it here in this, in this uh, conference. And that is that Unimed, as you all know, uh, has launched a number of subnetworks, thematic subnetworks, on specific topics, which are, uh, of course, of interest for our, <laughs> for our community. And one of the uh, uh, one of the subnetworks uh, is uh, exactly centered on the BlueMed initiative. Yeah. Um, uh, my colleague Martina has just published uh, the link uh, to the homepage of this subnetwork in this uh, in the chat. Uh, I have to say that it is still in it uh, in its infancy. Uh, we are looking in particular for uh, a coordinator for a volunteer. Uh, because, of course, we, in order to launch the subnetwork, we take the role of coordinators, but in order for it to be meaningful and especially uh, to bring the necessary competencies, uh, we need uh, someone who is really working, uh, working in the area. As you know, uh, Unimed is a sort of generalist association, so we don't have, uh, 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 apart from some specific topics, we, we don't have a very vertical, especially in terms of scientific research, uh, vertical competencies. So we are, we are uh, looking for, uh, and I, I'm telling this to, uh, more to the participants than to the, to the commission. <laughs> we are looking for volunteers who would like to contribute. And uh, I don't know, uh, Sigi, if you can uh, give us some elements of how you see the possible role of such a subnetwork uh, in, in order to, to promote and support your initiative? Well, we would welcome that very much, as I said, because uh, I think the future is bright for the Blue Med, you know, in the sense that uh, this, this link that uh, for, particularly for the pilot, huh? for a plastic-free Mediterranean, which in itself uh, is a pilot, but it is huge because it is very challenging. It's, uh, it's the whole uh, issues which happen on land. So it's a lot uh, really to deal with how can we prevent the plastic going into, what needs to be changed, what substitute research needs to go on to develop, for example, other materials. And so we have also, uh, we have published uh, uh, this year, I think uh, there was a, a kind of joint call and all in all, we have put 42 million euros to, to see uh, what, are the, what is the impact of plastic on health. I think that were my health colleagues with 20 something million. We uh, have published an innovation action. Can the litter actually be taken out uh, and then reused from the sea? And then my industry colleagues have also uh, published a call what are new substitutes? Uh, are there biodegradable in the sea, in the water materials? How can that be developed? And I think if we, if we summarize it, it is about, it was about more than 40 million. So <clears throat> I don't know whether anyone of you has uh, uh, participated, but all this, as I said, is uh, bridging and really trying uh, to prepare our future big mission. And the missions, uh, you might also know, there is money to go, it's, it's money earmarked. Once we have uh, uh, more details about the future financial framework, I cannot give you any 
uh, finance details now because all, it all depends how much money we will get overall for Horizon Europe. But uh, as the mission is one of the really top, top priorities and it is linked to both to the recovery plan, but also to the Green Deal, it will really have uh, uh, a lot of uh, calls potentials in future. So if there is a network that you establish in universities and you link up with us, you will have as well an opportunity to be upfront informed about all these different developments. And so this is my invitation to you to join us. Thank you very much. The invitation is very much welcome. <laughs> it's exactly, it's exactly the kind of uh, uh, of things that we would like to do, especially as as Unimed, in order to promote uh, the cooperation. Uh, now, um, I don't have. Uh, Niero, can I? Uh, just a minute. There is one question from the floor. How can we contact the national hubs? How can universities share their good practices and initiatives? Okay, um, there is uh, on the website of Blumet, there is a sub website for the for the. I can I can send you. I have some slides. <laughs> I can send you afterwards so that you can forward it to everyone, and we would like you to get in touch with the different colleagues. Thank you very much, Marcello. The floor is yours. Thank you, Raniero, and thank you, Sigi, for your presentation. First of all, thanks also for the invitation to the senior official next uh, Thursday, if understood well, and please send me more detail if possible. Yeah. We will have uh, another webinar, the last one on Thursday, but I will do my best to attend. As you know, I participate as a server in several uh, other senior officials of the BlueMed initiative, and also <clears throat> Uh, we promoted also the online courses launched by CNR on Plastic Free. And I attended also an event with CNR in Sicily to better discuss about skill development and so on. It was yeah. a very nice uh, situation there. Um, and in all this discussion around Blue Med, looking at our universities and in particular to Southern Mediterranean as one, uh, I see that one of the most important priority on this topic is uh, capacity building. How to build a common capacity building framework to support our universities to be more in line with not only the expectations that you have, but uh, in particular with the needs of this important uh, priority. Because as you, as you know, uh, when once we discuss about issue related to environment situation and so on, pollution and other things that are very important priority on the European side, sometimes is not the same in some of our southern Mediterranean countries because they have many other priorities to follow. Of course, it's not yeah. a lack of interest, but time by time when you have your priority list. Of course, if we look at employability issues, for instance, uh, but we could also try to explain better and better that also employability issues could be solved at looking at the blue med dimension, the blue economy and so on. Uh, I saw several calls related to research cooperation on blue med. We are also trying to underline to, to see how to answer to one of related to collecting data and so which is an important tool because without data we don't we can do we can uh, we are not able to act concretely but what about if there is any initiative about future capacity building uh, initiative for blue economy for southern mediterranean universities and i mean also research center because otherwise the risk is that you launch you push, but on the other side, there is no, no I don't want to say not react, reaction, but not the good one at least. And of course, uh, we totally support uh, your uh, invitation to be active on this and we will do through the sub network and not only our best to be active uh, to, to support more and more the Blue Med initiative itself, but also to be able to involve our members on, on this. Thank you. 
Thank you, Marcello. Now, the, the reason why we, we did launch the pilot as we did was really to establish within the collection of existing initiatives an element of capacity building by sharing the good practice. Because very often we, um, we realized that simple things done in one country can be replicated. Yeah. So, so that's, uh, but they're not known. Yeah. So that's why it is really worth, uh, I, I can't remember now how many, I think we have more than 70 or 80 existing initiatives already, which, uh, which can be studied and can easily be replicated. We also have now, uh, we need to analyze how many of the Marie Curie, Marie Sklodowska Curie programs exist with, uh, in, in the Mediterranean? And we came across that quite a lot actually <laughs> exist. And, and we don't know, maybe you have a better overview than, than we have, but we were very astonished that, uh, I give you a, a general number for all of Europe, there are 600 existing. Marie Curie's, uh, Marie Sklodowska Curie, ongoing projects dealing with blue growth, the blue economy, in the different aspects. Now we have to extract how many are actually operating in the Mediterranean. Hmm? So, so, because that is also for us that capacity building element. Huh? And then, as I said, in future, we will have, uh, hopefully, through the future mission, we will have money available for capacity building, because this is a very important aspect. And we are fully aware we cannot, when it comes to the Mediterranean, only fund initiatives uh, in the northern Mediterranean part because the water is really shared. Huh? The water is shared, the challenges are shared, so also the solutions need to be shared. Hmm? And that's, that's why we really want uh, to bring this uh, as, as, a, as a sea basin. Huh? But specifically for the moment we have one very interesting initiative as part of the Blue Met. We have launched the Youth Ambassadors and um, uh, there are fantastic, I mean, we had a presentation uh, recently at the last physical meeting that we had uh, in Venice in end of uh, January, where we had uh, the, pres the presence of uh, the young ambassadors from Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, Egypt. And uh, fabulous presentations, very short pitches, and they act within the universities and within their youth networks. And I think that's a source that you certainly should really leverage and see how can this be replicated with other interested people in the context of the universities. And we want it really, uh, we have now a general focus on youth as well maybe because I'm old and I really want to, to really invest now in the next generation. So what we do at every, uh, in every single initiative, we try as well to empower young people, to let them talk, to let them go out, to be present in all our events. We have also now uh, contacts with the European Youth Council. We very uh, recently had uh, uh, particularly about plastic in the sea a session with the European uh, Parliament Youth Council which uh, was amazing as well so all young people discussing and and I think this empowerment element is going to be very important as a, an additional capacity element in future so we will focus very much on this in future for the mission. But we are, as I said, we are just about, you know, to work out all these different new ideas and programs uh, 
And once the mission, hopefully next year, will be launched, uh, there will also be a, a stronger focus on capacity building, on training. We call it education training. We also want now to couple it with culture, because particularly in the Mediterranean, the culture element, and we thought as well to, to provide a, a, a message of hope after the COVID crisis. So to couple it as well with culture elements and with sport elements. So that's particularly speaking to young people. And that is what we think as well an element of capacity building. So thank you very much, Sigi, for this uh, very positive message, especially for ourselves, the young people around the Mediterranean. <laughs> we are very excited to, to be able, like you and me, I mean, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> to, uh, to be able to exploit all these opportunities. So I think uh, if there are, I see there are some uh, questions, uh, we have some information from the floor uh, about uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, the, part, the the national hub map. Um, so, if there are no other questions from the floor, are there any questions from the floor? No, I don't think so. So, I would like to thank you very much for for being with us. Uh, I would like uh, to remind to our uh, all the participants that Unimed, as Marcello said, is here to to promote the contacts with. Uh, uh, important players and in this case i would say fundamental players <laughs> the, the the real engine of all of these uh, initiatives uh, uh, which i have to say that we are particularly glad to see that there is this really uh, willingness from the european commission to involve southern mediterranean uh, partners and and, and uh, we, we we know that it is not uh, an easy process uh, we work on a daily basis with all of these countries one of the difficulties we have to face is the, the, the really different uh, uh, situation in the different countries. There are some countries with which we are trying to constantly uh, cooperate, but of course at the moment they are completely closed, like yes. unfortunately in Libya, for instance. Yeah. Uh, uh, but nevertheless, uh, we have had uh, we have had the last week, and we are going to have. Uh, the day after tomorrow, another uh, important meeting with the, the Libyan universities. Uh, it is uh, really striking to see how they uh, strive to participate, to be part of this. Yeah. And now, of course, unfortunately for the time being, it can only be online meetings. Uh, <clears throat> there are some other situations which are, which are quite critical. For instance, uh, our, our friends in Lebanon are, are living a very difficult a situation both because of the COVID crisis and because uh, a political instability in the region. Uh, so, uh, and uh, <clears throat> therefore, uh, I think it is uh, even more important in these in these cases uh, to tell them that there are some people here who are who are caring with them, who are uh, trying to to support them in in getting out of this crisis, and uh, under this respect, having a direct uh, link, a contact with. Uh, uh, policy makers like you uh, is extremely important. So, if there, yeah, you want to say something? Yes. <laughs> no. Thank you, Ranier and Marcello, because, you know, we, we can do whatever we can do, but we do it behind the screen in our offices. And if we do not have the link that you create, then we can do nothing. And so that is why you do a fantastic work and we would like really to use your bridges huh, to reach out, as I said before, at the local level, because that's, by the end of the day, that's where we as well want to know are our efforts and our investment worthwhile spent. Yeah? And so that's where we need you. So let's keep in touch because with the future mission coming, there will be a lot of opportunities and we need your really cooperation and active involvement. So I also wish you uh, a good continuation. You do a fantastic job and uh, let's stay in touch. And I see that my colleague Miguel is also online. And so Miguel is, is part of my team. 
And so you can reach either me or Miguel. Okay, so thank you very much. Of course, this is music to our ears. Uh, you are putting yourself in a difficult situation because if you offer us this kind of open door, you risk of finding us every, every day standing on your door and asking for information and cooperation and things like no, that. No, that's fine. <laughs> but, but you looked for it. It's your fault. Okay. <laughs> so, Tanti auguri. Eh? Stammi yeah, bene, Daniela. <laughs> bene. Thank you, everybody. And, Thank you. Uh, see you the next session. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Ciao, Marcello. Ciao, Sigi. Grazie. Ciao. Ciao. Bye-bye. Grazie.